Knowing the particulars of the controls architecture is the key to working effectively with the grid. The following slides help detail the natural dividing lines between the control as well as its relationship with the underlying client-side data source component. At the heart of all Ignite UI data-bound controls is the IG data source component. This is the client-side intermediary layer between the source data and the data-bound control, which takes responses from services, accepts local data like JSON, XML, and HTML elements, and arrays, and prepares it for the control. Much of the data-centric logic, as exhibited by the grid, is actually done by the data source. Features like paging, sorting, filtering, and schema support are all conducted in the data source control. And then the final result is made available to the data mount control, which in this case is the grid. So the grid sits on top of the data source, but it also wraps calls to the data source. This is done so that you're able to configure and customize the grid but you're not required to drop down and manipulate the data source component independent of the grid. Like I said, many of the features of the grid have their logic counterparts implemented in the data source. But the very same features also need to render specialized UI elements in order to support the feature. For instance, while the data source does the work of paging in the grid, the IG grid control is responsible for rendering the pager buttons and all the other required UI elements to support the feature. The nice thing about each of these features is that they exist in a modular fashion. In other words, if you don't tell the grid to use paging, then none of the process for paging is ever executed in the data source, and none of the paging UI elements are ever added to the grid. This keeps the grid performing lean. All of these aspects working in concert together are what make up the grid control as a whole. So let's look at how each part interacts with each other in a little more detail. The data source component and grid control live on the client. Once the data source processes data from any number of input types, then the data is eventually made available to the grid in the form of JSON arrays. Depending on what features are enabled, the grid is responsible for pulling in the appropriate scripts to render the feature UI. In this case, it's functionality like paging, sorting, filtering, and so on. The data source is responsible for performing the logic associated with those features, and again, only cares about the logic if the grid explicitly states it will use that feature. Input for the data source can come in many forms. When the data is from a local origin, the input boils down to either arrays, JSON objects, which includes JSON arrays, HTML elements, and this says tables, but controls like the tree can also use unordered lists and other elements like that, and XML data. When data comes from a service, then options include WCF, OData, and JSONP. Simple JSON objects and arrays aren't listed here because if you have a service returning JSON, it returns it to the page locally, which then makes it available to the data source from that point. And finally, as this added element denotes, you can even create custom widgets independent of the IG grid to interface with the data source component. And in fact, this is exactly what the engineers at Infragistics do when they create a new data-bound control.